Hi everyone and welcome back to the Tom Morgan Drum Studio. Today we're going to move on through the sequential approach to rudimental snare drum book and we're on page 17 and we're going to talk about the flam today and then we're going to do solo three that uses the flam. So look at solo or look at page 17. So let's actually play some flams and show you what I'm talking about. Um, a flam adds a grace note to the main note. And that grace note gives you a slightly broader sound than just a single note like this. We just add the grace note. Okay? It's important that the flam sound like one sound. In other words, we don't want it to sound like this. Two different sounds. We also don't want it to sound flat like this. Where both sticks hit at the same time. Now you may have noticed that I'm using a particular position when I play the flam, and the position is, is essential because it's going to help us get the right sound. If you don't play flams with this flam position, your, your flams won't sound like flams, at least not consistently. So if you look at the book on page 17, we start out with right hand non-alternating flams. In the top line, I have the right hand playing four regular strokes, just a down up stroke. And then I have the second measure with four grace notes. Now, obviously you wouldn't ever see four grace notes written this way, but it's to illustrate that we're gonna practice just playing the left hand grace notes by themselves. Okay, now notice that they're quite a bit softer than the stroke I'm playing with the other hand. And all it takes to get a flam sound is just adding just that little bit of a grace note to the main note and that's all you need. So the grace notes are always going to be softer than the main notes. So uh, line one, if I just wanted to practice it, four strokes, four taps. Okay, and then the second line after that adds them together and creates right-handed non-alternating flams. And that's a good way to practice flams to get started. Just practice them without alternating. The next two lines do the exact opposite. We start with the left hand playing the stroke. And it's important to play it like a down up stroke and come right back up to the original position. And then the right hand is playing the taps. So you can practice doing that line for a while. The tap is about an inch off the drum. We don't want it to get very high because if you do, it doesn't take much for this lower stick to come up and then you start getting the flat flams when they both hit at the same time. Okay, so the fourth line down just puts those two together and gives you left hand non-alternating flams. Okay, now you notice that my flams all sound exactly the same and that's because they look exactly the same. And that's the key. This position has to be consistent for your flams to sound consistent. Drums are instruments of motion, so if your motions are consistent, your sound's going to be consistent. If your motion's inconsistent, like your heights of your sticks are always at different levels, then that's how your flams are going to sound. They're going to be different. Okay, now we drop down to alternating flams, and in the rudimental style, Flams are almost always played alternating, like this. Just reversing the position. So these last three lines, I've just simply taken each hand separately. So here's what the right hand does when it's playing alternating flams. It's a stroke down, 
a stroke that remains down, sometimes called a down stroke, and then a tap up, an up stroke. So it's going to look like this. Okay, and I use my back fingers just a little bit to keep the stick from coming up like it naturally would. Okay, and then here's what the left hand is doing. It starts with a tap, a tap up, and then a down stroke or a stroke down. So that line sounds like this. And both of those lines are really good to practice so you can really focus on just one hand at a time and, and, and form the habit of doing that position the way I'm doing it there. When you put those together, you get the bottom line, which is kind of where all this is going, alternating flams. Okay, now I'm probably given the impression that this is a lot easier than it really is. I've done this for decades, so I've really got it ingrained into my head and, and I don't even have to think about it. Literally, I'm, I'm honestly not thinking about what I'm doing, um, but I had to think about it a lot when I first started. So when you start out, you may end up having a hard time keeping your low stick down like it's supposed to be. You have to you know, I, I, I have students just play one and then correct it. Well, I actually need to correct that one, but... Okay, so now I have to move this stick down. Move that stick down. And just try to correct it as quickly as you can. And, you know, eventually you want to just have it go instantaneously to the right spot, just without thinking. So... The big thing is don't get in a hurry. Don't try to start playing them real fast before you're ready. Don't sacrifice the position for speed. Now, if I do play fat, faster, that's hard to say, sorry. If I do play faster flams, the only thing that changes about my position is the, look, the upper stick doesn't come up quite as high as I go faster. And I'll just play some uh, slow to fast flams and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so obviously you can't lift it as high when you're going fast, but you notice it never changed sound, right? It still sounded like a flam and my low stick never changed. It's always the same distance from the drum, about an inch. All right, so as you get the flam going, uh, it's time to turn the page to page 18, and we're going to play solo three, which amazingly enough adds the flam. It's almost like there's some logic to the flow of this book or something. Okay, so a um, couple things about solo three. We've got first and second endings, two of them. I think we know how to do that now. Uh, after the second inning on the third line, there should be a repeat sign to send you back through those last um, two and a half lines again, the bottom. Uh, and if that's not there, that's a misprint. It should look like the same sign as at the very beginning uh, repeat sign. So if it's not there, just pencil it in. Hopefully they fixed that. I've let them know about it. Um, and then another thing about it is when I play a roll that precedes a flam, like at the beginning, I have a pickup that starts on the end of two, one and two and one, I've got to end in flam position because the next thing I'm going to play is a flam. If I end this way, then all of a sudden I've got to get my hand up here to try to play a flam. So I just end in flam position. All right, so you might have to practice that too. Just practice playing. Or a nine stroke roll. Okay, because that happens later in the solo. Now, if a roll doesn't precede a flam, 
For example, that first nine stroke roll there on the third line, you don't want to end in a uh, flam position because you're not going to play another flam. You want to end in, I call it roll position, which is where both sticks are about the same place. It's hard to start a roll when you're about one hand up. It's awkward. So it's better to have them here. So um, just always remember, if you have a question about the position, just think, well, what am I going to play next? And I need to be in the position, end in the position that I'm going to be able to play the next thing, whatever it is. Okay, so I'll play it, uh, and hopefully you get to the place where you can play this along with me with the video. So here we go. One, two, one, and two. All right, you may have noticed that when I played a flam that didn't precede another flam, but precedes a roll, like say the, the first inning, the, the last measure of the second line, I didn't use flam position there either. Now if you do, it's not the end of the world, you have a lot of time to get your left stick back down into roll position, but the, the roll that precedes the nine stroke roll, uh, you have a little bit less time to get it up there. So I just, I end that flam like this, so I'm ready to play the roll. All this stuff becomes second nature the more you practice it. Honestly, I don't think about it. I mean, I, I really don't. I just play and I've done it for decades and uh, it just happens. The, it's just the way I do it. It's my habit I've formed. But it wasn't like that when I first started. I had to go through the agony of, of practicing this and, and you know, forming good habits. But if you form the good habits, if you don't allow yourself to play things wrong, you know, don't go so fast that you're playing something wrong, but play it so slow that you can't do it wrong at first, and then gradually speed it up as you're able to continue to be consistent with the position, eventually it'll just be something that you don't even think about. And that's what we want. All right. So that takes care of uh, the flam and the solo three. And so we will see you next time. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't and uh, push the like button and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.